Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Argentines protest IMF debt restructuring plans. Turkish workers reject rising costs and poverty. Poor and indigenous peoples face growing violence in Brazil, says report. And pandemic health costs push 500 million into poverty. In our first story, thousands of people took to the streets of Buenos Aires on December 11th to protest the International Monetary Fund. The action took place amid negotiations between the Argentinian government and the IMF to restructure a $44 billion debt. The amount was part of the $57 billion loan agreement signed by former President Mauricio Macri in 2018. At the time, the government also enforced drastic austerity measures. After President Alberto Fernandez took office in 2020, he refused the rest of the loan and wanted to renegotiate the terms of repayment. Under the original terms, Argentina would have to pay back $19 billion in 2022 and 2023 each. The Fernandez government stated that the country could not afford these payments and that it would not compromise Argentina's future over this debt. The country's inflation reached 41.8% between January and October and prices have increased by 52% in the last 12 months. Over 40% of the population is living below the poverty line. The protest in Buenos Aires was held against any restructuring deal between the state and the IMF. Over a hundred student organizations, trade unions, left-wing movements and environmental and rights groups participated in the action. They argued that billions had been used to finance capital outflows instead of addressing socio-economic and infrastructural issues. Protesters chanted, no payment of debt, no IMF, on Saturday denouncing the debt as illegitimate and fraudulent. They also rejected adjustment measures and argued that the burden of debt was on people who were already suffering the economic impact of COVID-19. Protesters gathered outside the Plaza de Mayo and urged the government not to recognize the debt and to redirect funds to budgets for health, education and housing. Next, we go to Turkey, where a massive workers' rally was held in Istanbul on December 12th. Thousands of people gathered in Kartal Square under the slogan, Enough is enough, we want to make a living. The protest action was organized by the Confederation of Revolutionary Trade Unions of Turkey, or DISC. Public sector and health workers, students and retirees denounced the economic policies of the conservative Erdogan government. They also demanded that the minimum wage be at least 5,200 Turkish lira from 2022. Protesters spoke out against debt, poverty, hunger and unemployment during Sunday's rally. According to a survey conducted in May, Turkey's official line of starvation for a four-member family was 2,825 liras. The current minimum wage lies below the line at only 2,800 liras. Meanwhile, the inflation rate has hit 21% and the value of the lira has fallen by around 50% in 2021. DISC has also stated that while the global average minimum wage is between $385 to $390, it has fallen to $280 in Turkey. Protesters declared on Sunday that the Turkish working class and the country were not for sale and that victory would belong to the workers who resist. They demanded justice in income and a humane life and wage, stating that they would not surrender to misery. Organizations including the Communist Party of Turkey, the Workers' Party and the Socialist Workers' Party also participated in the protest. We now take a look at a report by Brazil's Pastoral Land Commission, which has documented a drastic increase in violence against indigenous poor and rural communities. Between January and August 2021, 418 territories witnessed destruction of houses, expulsions and land grabbing through false documents. There were also cases of attacks by hitmen and restrictions on access to collective use of land. Out of the 418 territories, 28% were indigenous, 23% belonged to the Afro-Brazilian Quilombola people, 
and 26 murders were recorded in the countryside between January and November 2021. These murders were those which result from hitmen, landowners, illegal miners and others. As reported by Brasil de Fato, deaths due to the ongoing conflicts increased by over 1,000%. This refers to deaths in cases where conflicts and lack of public policies disrupt access to basic rights like healthcare and education. Out of the 103 such deaths recorded this year, 101 were of the indigenous Yanomami peoples. The Yanomami Reserve has been repeatedly invaded and attacked with over 20,000 illegal miners currently present in the area. The Pastoral Land Commission has highlighted factors including structural racism and dismantling of key agencies which contribute to ongoing violence. Obstacles to accessing land of collective use increased by 1,057 percent in 2021. Expulsions of people from land also grew by 157 percent. This increase coincided with a rise in housing and insecurity across Brazil during the pandemic. As reported by Brazil de Fato, the number of families surviving on occupied land increased by 558 percent during the pandemic. And for our final story, we look at two reports by the World Bank and the WHO on pandemic-related poverty. 500 million people worldwide were pushed into extreme poverty due to health care costs related to COVID-19. The pandemic also triggered the worst economic crisis since the 1930s, making it even more difficult to pay for care. The disruption and strain on health services led to a drop in immunization coverage for the first time in 10 years. As a result, 23 million children lost out on life-saving vaccines. In 2019, 68% of the world's population had been covered by essential health services. These included reproductive and pre- and postnatal care, immunization and treatment for diseases like HIV, malaria and tuberculosis. Deaths from TB and malaria increased in 2020. Moreover, the provision of services did not ensure affordability, which left poor communities even more vulnerable. Even before 2020, almost 1 billion people were spending over 10% of their household budget on health alone. Moreover, 90% of all households incurring impoverishment due to out-of-pocket healthcare costs were already at or below the poverty line. The WHO and World Bank have stated that the pandemic halted and even reversed the progress made in universalized health care coverage over the past 20 years. Moreover, the reported numbers are based on pre-pandemic data with current figures expected to be much higher. And that's all for today. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.